Hi guys, now after comment upon comment upon comment from people who obviously know more than me about how the UK power grid is just going to collapse if everybody buys an electric car, I thought, you know what, I'll just do a video about it. And save me from replying to each individual one, I can just post this video up and say, look, just watch this. Because my brain won't let me not reply to people who post things like that. It's just, it's just, ah, I can't cope. So, what do you think is going to happen to the UK power grid if we all buy electric cars? Now, before I go any further, if you're one of these people that have some sort of irrational hatred of electric cars, then you might as well stop watching this video now. You don't need to watch it. You obviously know everything already, so just f*** off. Now the type of comments I get are typically the UK power grid won't cope if people buy electric cars, um, it's going to blow the fuses in my house, basically it's just electric generation, there's not going to be enough and some people actually say I'm not going to buy an electric car because the, the, the your power companies won't cope, it'll just collapse everything, it will be in brownouts and blackouts all the time. Now this is utter bollocks quite frankly, it doesn't exist, it's, it's fabricated. Uh, and I hate to use this term, but uh, it is... A fake news! A fake news! I mean, yeah, maybe he's right. It is fake news. <laughs> Did I just agree with Donald Trump? So, where does this uh, misinformation come from? Well, I'll give you a clue. It's from a mainstream media source, and it rhymes with fail. That's right, our good friends at the Daily Mail are back, providing us with great journalism and great accuracy. Now, whatever problems the UK has, it's obviously, according to the Daily Mail, always a cyclist's fault. Now, just a two-second Google has brought up three articles that I want to talk about briefly, and then I will tell you why it simply isn't true, providing you with actual evidence. The first one is from Alex Brummer. He obviously knows what he's talking about because he works at the Daily Mail. And the title is, So how on earth are we going to power 9 million electric cars? Asks Alex Brummer. Wow, he looks, he looks like he knows what he's on about. So let, let, let's read on. I'll just take a few snippets rather than go through the entire article, but I will post the articles up in the description below if you do want to read them all. It basically goes on about uh, tax exemption and electric cars, zero emissions, all that sort of stuff. And then he says this. Intrigued to see the choices that might be available, I visited a Mitsubishi dealer. The hottest model on the forecourt in this category was the latest hybrid sports utility vehicle. They only sell one plug-in hybrid, the Outlander. Okay, but you know, maybe he's not a motoring journalist, it's just a journalist. A salesman told me that if I was interested in buying it and wanted to avoid the slow process of recharging the car overnight using my domestic electric supply, he could install a more powerful charger on my driveway for free. So I guess that's good, you get a free charger. I had never realised that owning an electric car involves such a daily palaver. So, put off by the idea of having to plug in the car every night, and the potential for overloading our house's electric circuits, I did not proceed any further. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh dear. Right, well, yeah, it's obviously a daily palaver having to plug your car in, um, even every night, which, let's face it, for those that don't know, a plug-in hybrid doesn't have to be plugged in. You could just treat it like a normal hybrid, or as Toyota call it, a self-charging hybrid. It doesn't have to be plugged in if you don't want to. Now, it does have a point about being a daily palaver. I have a full electric car, which means I have to plug it in probably five, maybe six times a week. I do spend at least five to ten seconds each time plugging it in. That's like a minute out of my week. I mean, I, I'm losing a minute by having to plug my car in. I mean, what a palaver. Of course, it means I don't have to visit a petrol station, or in case of a plug-in hybrid, you don't have to visit a petrol station as much. So you're losing a minute a week, but you're saving a, at least one or two visits to a petrol station. I also like where he says, the potential for overloading our house's electric circuits. <laughs> oh dear, I, I, I'll come to that in a bit, because uh, the other articles refer to that uh, specifically. Now this is my favourite bit of this article, and proof that this guy is a real journalist who does his research. The 2040 ban... <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to have to start again. The tooth band will mean changing from a society where currently less than 5% of the cars registered have a form of electric power to 100% in just 22 years. No, that's not what it means at all. In fact, that doesn't come close to what it means. Right, for those that don't know, the 2040 ban is basically for the new car sales only. Okay, 
you cannot buy a petrol only model or a diesel only model new from 2040 onwards if you buy uh, let's say a full petrol car one day before this ban you can carry on driving it for as long as you want we are not changing every single car over to a plug-in hybrid or an electric car in 2040 it's just the sales of new ones so mr alex you will not have 100 percent of cars in 22 years being plug-in electric cars okay have we got that if you don't want to plug your car in after 2040 just buy a plug-in hybrid which as we've already said doesn't need to be plugged in if you don't want just drive it and run it as a normal hybrid i mean this guy just he hasn't done any research at all he reckons in 22 years every single car on the road private at least will be will be have some form of electric power he won't do he's probably not even going to be close to that it's usual daily mail bollocks either he's been told to severely bias it towards in this case non-evs or he's just done absolutely no research at all he's looked at a document not read it and then done a, an article on it i mean he just Again, the articles that I'm talking about in this are in the description below. Feel free to read the full thing. The next one. Electric cars could collapse the national grid unless energy giants can decide when and how they are charged. Basically, what it's saying is that if everybody plugged their electric car in at the same time, at peak times, then it could cause a problem. Which is true, quite frankly. It could cause a problem. It could also cause a problem if everybody turned their kettles on at the exact same time. But you know what? It's not gonna f happen! Now it mentions the My Electric Avenue project, which is basically doing this sort of study. And if everybody plugs it in at the same time, the idea is they would reduce the amount of, uh, of charge you can put into your car until the grid's happy to give you more. So uh, if everybody plugs it in, they will reduce the amount of charge your car's getting to keep the grid nice and safe. But that's if everybody plugs it in at the same time. No one's going to get in the shower at the exact same time and showers take a lot more energy. No one's going to turn the kettle on at the exact same time as everyone else in the country. It, it, again, it's a non-article. They're basically taking a, a headline from a massive multi-page report and stuck it on here and done an article about it. And you see, they say here, it said analysis shows that where a large number of electric vehicles are being charged at the same time, this could potentially cause local network outage or other performance issues. Now, why have they never said that if everybody uses their electric shower at the same time, that could cause the same problem? That's, that's never been in the Daily Mail, has it? As far as I know. Probably has, to be honest. Let's face it, they complain about everything. The report states that additional demand created by electric vehicles can be managed in a number of ways to mitigate risks to the network. This includes time-of-use tariffs to encourage electric vehicle charging at specific times to avoid increases in peak demand, which is the key here, peak demand as well as technical solutions such as smart managed charging. So the report's basically saying, we know what to do, it'll be fine. But the Daily Mail lead with a headline that the basically everything's things are just going to blow up and we're all going to be in the dark ages again. I mean, I charge my car between 11 and 6 a.m. So 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. I'm on a time of day tariff. I have a smart meter and it means if I charge my car during that time, I get charged five pence per kilowatt hour. If I charged it at the peak time, it would cost me 25 pence per kilowatt hour. So, because it's human nature, I charge it when the grid wants me to, at night, because it saves me. We all know everyone's getting a smart meter rolled out in the next year or two or three or whenever it is, and people will naturally choose to charge their car when it's cheapest, for obvious reasons. And before anyone asks, I tell my car when to charge. Even if I plug it in at 5 p.m., it doesn't start charging until 11 p.m. There's timers on the car that do that, so I don't have to go outside at 11 every night. Now, the last and third article, which is also, this is, this is a good one. This is a real good one. This is from Tim Collins, again, from the Daily Mail, from August 2017. The headline, forget that cuppa, charging an electric car at the same time as boiling your kettle will blow your fuse. National Grid warns, boiling a kettle would be enough to tip this over the edge and trip the main fuse. <laughs> Electric car drivers of the future may have to choose between charging their vehicle at home and having a cup of tea. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, dear. <clears throat> Running high demand appliances, including kettles, ovens and immersion heaters at the same time, will be enough to trip the main fuse of a home. The claim comes from a paper issued by the National Grid, which looks at the impact of increased ownership of electric cars. Again, they've just picked out a tiny bit 
out of context, stuck it as a headline, and then here we are. So where do they get this from? Because it's true, this could happen, only it can't. What they're saying is if somebody installs an electric car charger incorrectly, or a non-electrician, if you like, someone who's not qualified, then you could plug your car in, I know, use your shower, for example, and it will trip your main fuse because somebody has installed something that they shouldn't have. Anyone that installs an electric car, especially if the, you, uh, you want your Olev grant, which goes towards the charger, will have to be installed by an approved installer or just an electrician in general. They would do a survey of your house and then would determine whether or not you can have the full 7 kilowatt hour charger. If not, they would just put you in a 3 kilowatt hour. They would limit it or just say you can't have one at all unless your main fuse is upgraded. So quite frankly, if an idiot puts the charger in who's not qualified, you might have a problem. In the same way that if you installed another electric shower, for example, you would have the same problem as a charger. So, so I'm, again, why is this article even here? Why, why is it there? But that's what people read. They will see the article, they will see the headline, they will read a little bit of it and think, oh my God, my house is just gonna explode if I get an EV charger. No, 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 not even close because you wouldn't get one installed unless it was safe to do so. Just like you wouldn't get anything else that very high in demand, an electric shower again, you wouldn't get that installed because an electrician wouldn't allow it unless your house could support it. So it's, it's just not true, okay? Your house will not go pop if you plug your car in unless you did it yourself or you've got a moron for an electrician who doesn't care about whether he loses, loses his job or not. One solution proposed by the National Grid is to equip homes with more powerful fuses. You don't say. I mean, Jesus Christ, fellas. I'm not having a go at National Grid here because they have to look at every single eventuality. But this is what the Daily Mail do. They pick the bits that make a good headline. Well done, Tim. You, 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 really, you really knocked it out of the park on that one. I mean, just looking at in the comments, people are buying it. Oh my God, I won't get one. Oh, someone here. If you read the National Grid discussion paper, you realise just how badly its views have been misrepresented. Listen, okay? If you're posting these sort of things in my channel, listen. Now, onto the proof, as I called it, of why this is utter rubbish. Don't take my word for it. I'm a guy on YouTube. The only people that I think we should listen to are the National Grid themselves. The National Grid's EV lead, Graham Cooper, and Ofgem, and the Energy Networks Association, all met with the Business Energy and Industrial Strategy Committee. So it's the government and the National Grid and Ofgem. This is what they had to say about this whole EV grid situation. Cooper said the firm's modelling suggested not a tremendous amount of new generation is needed if energy companies can marry up the challenge of the generation and the wires to get the generation in the right place. This is a key one. Even if uptake of electric vehicles is more aggressive than the National Grid's modelling suggests, Cooper said the system would be able to cope. While the UK's generation mix is changing relatively quickly, the system is very robust and is responding to that change. So I think there is enough time, even if we see sharper uptake, to respond in the right way. Asked whether the UK's government target to phase out new petrol and diesel cars by 2040 should be brought forward to 2030, Cooper said he believed the National Grid would support a more ambitious target and could absolutely cope in that scenario. He said even if the ramp up of electric vehicles met its most aggressive scenarios, the transmission system would not require a wholesale upgrade. I will also post a link on the Parliament live TV stream so you can watch him talk to the government and say what I have just repeated to you. This is the people that run the National Grid telling the government basically will be fine there's no problems even if the uptake will be bigger and ooh, scarier than we first thought we can still cope there's not going to be a problem so can we please put this to bed now the uk power grid and this is uk channel so i'm just concentrating on the uk power grid i don't know what more proof you would require but no doubt someone will still argue against what they are saying i'm just repeating what they're saying so please, please, let's stop it now. It's not a problem, it never will be a problem, it never was going to be a problem. If you learn anything from this, it's that you shouldn't read the Daily Fail, even for side boob. And I might not want to say this. What do you think about what I've just said in this video? That's what the comments are for below. With the proof, and I would like to think it is proof that I have put in front of you, 
uh, and it's in the description as well. Everything I've been talking about is in the description right now. You can link to it, watch it, read it, do what you want. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. And of course, as usual, please click the subscribe button and I've got over 100 videos in my channel, so knock yourself out. As usual, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.